Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. And today, I've got to check my batteries. I'm doing it once a month. And um, I've been told that I need to equalize these things about once a month, which I thought was a little excessive. You guys that are off grid and have your own lead acid batteries, you guys leave me a comment in the, in the, in the comment section, let me know what's up. But um, let's go check these things out. Let's get going. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. Okay guys, so we have just recently purchased a stand-up freezer. Let me show it to you guys. But you guys have been following the channel for a while. You guys know that uh, we have basically, uh, everything we have here is propane. We have our wood stove for heat. So the only thing that we're running that's, that's power is going to be uh, the Starlink, which you guys see right there. Uh, our electric refrigerator, super high efficiency. And then, of course, the inverter, which runs 30 watts continuous because it's on all the time. And then, of course, we have our well pump and then uh, various things that we turn on for electricity. But we don't use that much power um, all the time. I have eight. Well, let me go show you guys the system. All right, guys, here's the system. Let me back up a little bit for you. Eight T105s. Now, each one of these things is rated at 225 amp hours and 6 volt. So I'm running a 24 volt system. I have four that are wired in a series to make 24 volts. So I have two banks of 24 volts, 225 amp hours each. So that's 450 hours of storage of capacity. It is time to check these batteries. Now, I've been uh, having issues with these things. They're about six to seven years old. And, uh, but they've been holding up just, just fine. The problem is we added a stand-up freezer. Now looking at, uh, your total yearly electricity use, 282 kilowatt hours per year. What does that transfer to, or uh, what does that tra translate to for a daily usage? Not a whole lot, but with just my electric refrigerator, I was getting... Uh, if we go to bed with 100% of, of these batteries topped off, uh, it would go down to about 8, 9%. I'd, I, we'd wake up at 91 or maybe eight, eight, 90%. Now with this refrigerator, this freezer, and it's a stand-up freezer, it's not the uh, chest style, and we rarely open this thing. Plus it's in my basement where it's cooler down here. 4,000 watt inverter. There's my step down for my generator. It's cooler down here, so it doesn't run very much. It, it's, it's probably about 55 degrees in here, 50 degrees all the time. And it doesn't use that much power. But with these T105s, we've been dropping down 15 to 16% overnight. We'll get up and it'll be 84, 80, 86%. So this refrigerator has definitely added about 5% more drain overnight. And we're talking about an eight hour, eight to 10 hour uh, span of time between the time we go to bed and time we wake up we check our battery levels all right time to add some water to these things and uh, let's see here as you guys can see these things are gurgling because I got my solar panels are charging right now but you can see the water levels I, I never let the water level get down to the tops of of those lead uh, the lead panels inside. Of course, right when I'm trying to video, you guys are here making a bunch of scandalous noise. Yes, Bear, I know you want to play frisbee. We'll play in a second. Just chill out. All right, so guys, I'm going to add some water to these things and top these things off. And I always bring the water level just to the bottom of these little uh, spouts inside. I don't take them up any higher than that because you need to have a little bit of room for the air to uh, to move around. But I added water to this one, and you can see that it's it's bubbling in there pretty good. Um, as well as these right here. These batteries being about six to seven years old, their lifespan is 10 to 12, depending on how much you take care of them, keep them maintained properly, keep them really well charged, which we do all the time. I am considering, because of the extra load on my system, I'm considering upgrading to different batteries. I can't afford the lithium ion batteries. That's, those things are ridiculously expensive. 
Uh, I would need four of those things to replace these eight batteries just to equal my to equal my um, capacity. But I have an option, I have an opportunity to purchase some AGM, which are acid glass mat. So they are lead acid batteries just like these, but because they have a, uh, it's a glass mat inside, all of the acid is absorbed and in those glass mats inside, they don't gas. They don't give off uh, hydrogen. So uh, you don't have to worry, and, and there's no, th th there's acid in there, but it doesn't slosh around. They're sealed batteries. Anybody that knows anything about uh, AGM batteries, but you also know that they're very expensive. Uh, the cheapest one I was able to find online was 350 bucks, and they go all the way up to $1,000. So I am have the opportunity to buy some that are used anywhere from one to three years old from decommissioned cell, cell sites as backup systems. And they hardly ever get used because the cell sites rarely ever go down in power. So these things are, they're, even though they're, they're one to three years old, they're still in really good condition. So stay tuned, guys. I'm going to go check these things out. I have somebody that can give me a bunch of these things for a really good price. I'm considering upping my uh, capacity from eight of these to 12 of those, which would effectively give me about 1,100 uh, amp hours of uh, capacity. Each one of them is 12 volt, so I would need technically half as many, and they're 190 amp hours each. I would technically need half as many as, as these. I could replace this system with really four and have almost the same. That would be 360 amp hours. It would be a little bit smaller system. So if I do a uh, an eight battery system, I would have four 24 volt banks of 190 amp hours, which would be just a little under 800 amp hours. So I'm thinking about going to 12. So you guys leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. And uh, stay tuned for those AGM batteries. I will let you guys know uh, what happens. It all depends on how good a condition those batteries are in. If they, if they charge, if, they, if, if I put my tester on them and they show that they've got a, a full charge and that the batteries are good, uh, I think I just might go ahead and get 12 of those things and replace these. Uh, we're about to head into wintertime. Uh, this is the last few days of summer, and uh, yes, Barrett, I'll be there in a second. Last few days of summer, and I'm trying to get everything prepared. Yesterday, we did the flue cleaning. It's that time of year again. Replaced all the bricks inside the stove, and uh, so we're getting everything prepared. We got our get our firewood stacked up and split, and so it's all it's all preparation for this fall when it starts to get cold. So, so you guys, thanks for watching. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about AGMs versus these lead acid batteries. I know that they last longer, they can they can withstand cold a lot better, they charge really, really well, they just tend to be more of an expensive technology. Uh, but if you guys have any anything else you can offer, let me know. Uh, you guys want to email me and give me your insight, let me know. That'd be great. So thanks for guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.